Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. My name is Dylan Forte and uh, I'm a tattoo artist. I'm currently located in Malibu, California. I've been tattooing for about 15 years. I started tattooing in Berkeley, California. I got an apprenticeship when I was maybe 17. It's really difficult, uh, especially then. I mean, I actually don't know now, obviously, but um, especially then it was just, you know, not a lot of people want to bring more people into tattooing. It's kind of always been that way. It's sort of a small, it's a small knit community. And I guess it's gotten, it's actually gotten massive now, but um, it was just from asking around, you know, I mean, I went from, I think I went to almost every shop from Eureka up by uh, Arcaded all the way down to, um, you know, where I was living at the time, which was Oakland, Berkeley. And um, yeah, I mean, I must've talked to like 40, 50 shops and literally zero wanted uh, an apprentice. It's not like the super desired thing. I mean, some people do, I mean, want one obviously, but um, I talked to my buddy, Mark, now friend Mark, um, Ben, just some guy, you know, he was like, I just told him basically like, hey, if I, can I just come in and mop your floors like every day for free and I can learn some stuff. And he's like, and eh, come back. And he's just like, basically I came back like every day for like, a month and he's like all right fine so it's like it's not exactly it's not like a traditional that is sort of the traditional way to get into tattooing physically like to literally get into tattooing that's kind of how how it was at least how it was for me i was like six um i think i had this really vague recollection of that i remember being on a bunk bed and thinking it would be cool to do tattoos I don't really know if that is a real memory or just like a, some, a dream or something, but I think it was growing up skateboarding. Uh, a lot of the, you know, like pro skaters had tattoos. So that's probably where I first saw it. You know, it's, it's hard to determine first when there's something vague like that. Like when was the first time you saw the color blue? You're like, I, I don't mean, maybe, you know, maybe this guy, I'm not, I'm not sure. But like, it's hard to have those determined firsts in the past, I, in the past. In the past. I mean, I think I wanted always to do art. I always did art. So it wasn't like something new. It wasn't like, oh, I should do tattoos on people. It was just like, I'd always been painting. I'd always been drawing. Um, I was always interested in trying to figure out different avenues for that and how we could um, just explore different mediums. And I think tattooing was uh, one of the more interesting ones. It's definitely the, it has the highest risk factor of any medium, you know, comparatively to say, um, a canvas you know canvas is cool obviously I do a lot of canvas style like work but it's not um I think it doesn't have the same kind of like danger factor that tattooing does it has it keeps you on your toes a little more so I think that's what really drew me to that figure geometry in general um is the belief I wouldn't actually go sorry to say a belief to start over sacred geometry was officially coined sacred due to its use in architecture. It was just the, the geometric realization of architecture. So they started to notice that all of the ancient temples, all the mosques, all the churches, all, all of these structures were mapped out using a very specific geometric you know, sort of archetype. And as people noticed that more and more, they started uh, to deliver the commentary connotation of or yeah connotation of uh sacred to it you know it was it was described to be sacred due to the fact that it was found throughout monoliths and megalithic structures all around the world so it's basically that's where people started really pulling in the concept of it being uh, a sacred geometry so in all reality it is simply like the geometry of nature that's really what it is right so it's like it's like how plants grow there's a very specific a geometric sequence that in the way plants grow, in the way people people grow, in the way solar systems are aligned, in the way our celestial bodies, their orbits, the way Venus and Earth orbit each other produces a pentagonal shape that's um, plain and ex an extraordinary geometry. You know, so like the geometry is all around us. Every, it's, it's kind of like, it's easy to see, but sometimes it's elusive. You know, it's, um, it's throughout everything. And I think, so, the easiest way to sum up uh, the stylistic components of what I do is just really um, 
a focus on the mathematics of nature. That's, so that's really it, you know? So it's like, I think that's one of the only true things. It's, a, it's scientifically true. It's not like, a, it's not like an up for debate pseudoscience. Like, I think people have this, um, have this belief that the idea of sacred geometry is like some mystical fairy tale, but it, when in reality, it's, it's easily measurable. This is not something, this has been measured for thousands of years. I mean, the, the Egyptians built all of their pyramids, all of their great monoliths, all of their mega structures using absolute ultimate precision regarding uh, geometry. So they're extremely intelligent in that way. But um, that, that's my biggest source of inspiration and also what I do, I guess, what I'm trying to, uh, to point forward. The, the use of black work or dot work, I mean, black work is just literally the use of black ink uh, exclusively. It's just actually just, uh, a simplification of the process. So like, I'm a huge fan of minimalism. And uh, you can do the same thing with, um, you know, a plethora of colors. It's just more straightforward to eliminate that variable. Um, for me, black and skin, no matter what the skin tone or type, it's still going to be the peak contrast. So you're going to have peak contrast using black and black, not black. Um, so really that's just for a tonal contrast. That's, that's pretty much what it is. I just feel like it, uh, it eliminates the unessential. Um, the dot work is, is fun. It heals really well. And it's, um, it kind of gives the piece a, a, a more intricate feel. Uh, I think that's why I'm drawn to it. It's also when I was in Australia for the first time, uh, I noticed a lot of Aboriginal art was all done exclusively in dots. And it was, they had a really cool meaning behind it, which was um, each dot represent, represented like the individuality and the entire picture was sort of the collective. So it was like saying that basically you need to make the totality with little teeny pieces. You know, it's like pixel, it's a form of almost like pixelation. It was a concept similar to like a, an early concept of pixelation or just like kind of how the, it's a representation of how the world is, how we're all individual little spheres in our own, but then it's collectively a larger sphere. So it's sort of a wheels within wheels or spheres within spheres uh, concept or construct. And that's, that's the main draw to it is, is probably that. Also, it, it off, dots offer a tonal contrast to skin, being that it's textural. So you have a textural contrast along with the tonal contrast via the black. So it's it, it just, it's an artistic, uh, like technique also it, it has a plethora of benefits for my style I guess yeah. well I used to use color um, all the time I actually did predominantly only color I was really inspired by like artists say like Alex Gray and a lot of other visionary artists and I really liked the idea of trying to describe um, that multi-dimensional world or like perceived like psychedelic kind of experience using more of a color palette that was far more diverse now i i do pretty much just exclusively black it's just uh it's just more straightforward I, i'm trying to be steer off saying like easier it's like not easier at all you know it's just it's different pigment viscosity too it's um black is a thinner pigment viscosity on average meaning that it's thinner so what what you have is for producing line work you're going to have a much easier time achieving a consistent line with a low, uh, high viscosity, low viscosity ink being that it's thinner. Now, if you have like a really thick ink, i.e. any color ink, just the way you're producing pigment, it's, it's made from larger molecules and um, it just have the color, the color to work. It's just, it's thicker. So basically um, you could produce a, um, if you were to produce a, a lower viscosity color ink, it would be, it would be thinner, but it would also be less opaque. So you have a, if you're trying to do a large area with a flat tone, it, it, you, it just, you have to have a machine. It's unnecessarily complicated to explain those details, but um, I think it's more efficient. People ask me favorites, like, I'm not good at favorites. Uh, I mean, my favorite tattoo I ever, Ever done um, on me? I did just a couple dots on myself in the pyramids of Egypt. 
uh, in the king's chamber in Cairo. Um, I thought that's kind of cool. You have to like, I had to like sort of sneak my machine in. I have a little wireless machine and just uh, have like an opening cap and fill it up and like put it on the little glove and just like do some. But uh, I thought that was the most, the most fun ex tattoo experience. Um, second to that would probably be tattooing um, above base camp in Everest. And I think that was the highest tattoo anyone's done, like elevation wise, besides in a plane, but that's just kind of cheating. That's different. Um, th but yeah, Everest is just, I mean, that was just amazing. I mean, I tattooed, so that's like kind of a cool story. Um, I lost my phone. I was in the, at the Nepal tattoo convention and I lost my phone in one of the, one of the taxis. And uh, one of the guys running the convention actually somehow made it happen. He called everybody and about three or four days later, they did find my phone, which was helpful, obviously. Um, and he was like, oh, I'll give it back to you if you, you do a tattoo on me, like a little one. And I was like, all right, um, I like this. <laughs> but I appreciate the hustle. Yeah, but you got to come with us to Everest. And he was like, what? And like, obviously, well, of course. Yeah, I've never, I've been, you know, even living there his whole life, you know, I've never been to Everest. You have to get a helicopter or, you know, go on one of the treks and it's super kind of treacherous. But um, yeah, we got a helicopter up to Everest. Um, it was pretty crazy. It was like all day, you know, it was like pretty intense. And then we went, um, you end up getting dropped off uh, right above base camp. It's about almost 18,000. It's like 17, 0.5 thousand feet, I think. So it's like pretty high. Um, like that between that and like 18. And um, yeah, we did a little tattoo. Just, just a little one. Uh, those are like kind of the coolest for me because it's like that, that it's a cool story. It's a cool experience. I've done, I mean, obviously I've done like whole body, like whole bodies and like bigger for me is usually more impactful. So I could say some of the larger scale work I've done on people, but I've done a lot of tattoos and those probably stand out the most, I think. When I started tattooing, I did, I did not think I was going to tattoo like celebrities or whatever. Uh, I didn't think I was, and I didn't think, I didn't necessarily, I think there was a period where I was tattooing for a while and I hadn't. And I, then I started thinking that that was kind of weird, but uh, maybe that's kind of, I don't know, <laughs> egocentric, but like, I, like, then there was sort of like, then there was more people, obviously I moved down to LA, but you know, Oddly, oddly enough, it wasn't really in LA that I tattooed anyone that would be like, well, yeah, I don't know. Um, I did tattoo a couple of like interesting people in that way. Um, one of the stories that was fun is uh, when I tattooed Chris Hemsworth in Morocco. That was a cool, like, that was definitely back to like the tattoo like experience. That was a cool experience. Um, I was out there in London for the um, tattoo convention. I, I usually go every year except this year, obviously. And um, I had a few days after the trip to, to try and go somewhere. Um, I'm just a little vacation. So I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll go to Morocco. Um, we flew out to Morocco for basically just the weekend. And um, yeah, I was just gonna go on vacation to go check out some cool stuff like that in the Atlas Mountains. And um, Hensler, uh, Chris Hensworth sends me a DM and he's like, oh, I wanna get a, I wanna get a tattoo. And I'm like, well, sure yeah, let's do it, you know, at some point, and he's like, oh, I'm in Morocco, I'm like, oh, I'm in Morocco, so like, yeah, let's do it out here, that's cool, you know, so yeah, we just did like a little one, um, you know, on his arm, but um, that was probably one of the most, like, interesting tattoo celebrity experiences, because it kind of combined, combined all the little fun aspects of it, but yeah, I guess I like doing some small stuff, I don't do small tattoos in general, like, I, no one asked me to do, like, a small tattoo, so I, get, I guess when I get to focus more on a experience than an actual piece of art it's, it's a different way to look at it and in a lot of ways just a, it's just a different way to look at it it's a cool way to look at it but that was that's probably the main one that was like interesting experience wise um i tattooed usher that was cool he came to the studio so it's it pretty straightforward you know he's like yo i like your work i was like oh that's cool man you're usher i like your work he's like cool i want to get tattooed i'm like all right come get tattooed and he got a big tattoo and he's really nice. You know, that's not that exciting. You know, so sometimes I have a hard time with like, I mean, he's nice, but like what it's like, there has to be like a story for it to be more than just like, especially when it's often celebrities aren't getting like my most epic tattoos. You know, it's not like they're like, oh, you know, uh, DJ Khaled got an entire bodysuit by me. I'd be like, that would be pretty crazy. You know, <laughs> it doesn't really like, 
if they do get a tattoo, it's usually not that big or that like, oh my God, it's usually that people are enamored by them getting any tattoo. So it almost is, it's almost like it, it's either a challenge or it eliminates the challenge. Like no matter what you do on them, people are going to be like, what? That's cool. So it's sort of like, it, null, it sort of like nullifies the artistic aspect of it. But at the same time, it, it does sort of liberate that in a way where you are doing something interesting and it's a, it's just like, it's like anyone, like there's a lot of really cool people. Everyone I tattoo is, has a, a really interesting story. You know, obviously some probably don't. You, you just say that is kind of vague, but I'm not sure. Weird, right? So like, I get asked a lot of times if I get tattooed with one person, who would it be? And I'm like, I don't know. I never think about that. I never actually think about like wanting to tattoo someone other than it's like, I'm like kind of on the opposite side of that usually, but um, man, I've answered it the same because I have been asked that a bunch recently. Um, probably Elon. I mean, I think that's probably like the most innovative person right now doing stuff that could be, could be cool because we could do like a tattoo on the moon or a tattoo on Mars. So like it has to kind of all, it's like, I don't want it to just be on them because I don't care that much. Like maybe it's cool for them, but like, I don't really, it's just kind of the same to me. But that would be probably the most like interesting, I think. If, we're, if I were to tattoo Elon Musk and we did it like not on earth. It's like, I've done a lot of tattoos. It's not like, if it's not, it's either about like, I'm gonna do a huge piece, like we're gonna do a bodysuit and it's gonna be the craziest piece of art ever done on a human. That to me is like, okay, that like gets whatever, gets it going. Or it's like, how are we gonna make this? I mean, I think, I think I just have like a semi-competitive nature in general. And um, like, I didn't really play any sports or anything. I was like, it was like a little, I played some baseball, some basketball, but like, you know, as a kid and then skateboarding and it's like, it's all kind of like solo. It's not really a, a sport. And tattooing is not at all a sport. Like that's what he's the literal opposite of a sport. So like to try to, you know, I don't know, like bring that uh, competitive nature into tattooing. It really shouldn't be in tattooing. I feel like it's the opposite, but I don't know. I think that's kind of what pushes me towards wanting to do progressive stuff or do something different or just do something that has an experience that's fun or different or exciting. We're just trying to we kind of really bring in that, that sort of excitement into it in a way that's different than just usually like, okay, I'm going to put you in pain and you're like, okay, I'm going to withstand pain. There's, it has to throw something else into it. So I think um, tattooing on say like the moon would be cool. Mars might be a little bit far. I'm down for Mars if you can come back. I would tattoo Elon, we'd go, go. But it's like, even just, I mean, here would be cool, but it wouldn't be like that crazy. I mean. Yeah, we released that quite possibly some of the worst timing, a uh, Forte Tattoo Technology, uh, which is a biodegradable base compostable tattoo supply company. So what, what we do is I source manufacturing for basically every single single use disposable product needed for tattooing which is actually a lot you know so you, you use approximately i don't know i think it's, they say 185 pounds of trash per person on average annually and that's just a standard person whereas tattooing i mean you're using using a lot of trash i mean you're filling like a maybe a you know like a 30 gallon bag like in a day and if you have a shop i mean you're talking about like on average four to eight artists per shop you have about a hundred thousand shops in the united states alone it's upward upwards near a million artists if people are tattooing on the shops so just in the united states you're looking at quite possibly like nearly a million tattooers now they're using a bag that's like yep i don't know you know you're about yay big per per day you know it's a significant amount of trash per person so like you're filling up like a dumpster basically in a week now, uh, I mean, I think I heard something that like Los Angeles alone produces like 10 tons of 10 cubic tons of trash, non biodegradably just plastic trash waste that goes into the ocean like daily, like 10 cubic tons per day. That's 20,000 pounds daily. You know, it's, it's actually kind of intense. So it's like, so I've been trying to figure out how to solve some of these problems because it's like, there's, we got, you know, we got obviously enough of them, but it's like, you can't also just solve everything, you know, yet. But I think um, that was something that I felt like we could make a difference in and maybe take a dent out of. Um, 
So basically what we do is anything that we need. So you have a razor, we have a biodegradable razor. It's made of like a, a cornstarch. Most of the stuff is made, it's all derived from plants. It's all plant-based. It's all, um, it's all biodegradable and a lot of the products are compostable. Um, there's, it's complex with the difference between the two. Honestly, it's my vision is just to have it either degrade or not. I don't really see all of its semantics in my opinion, other than that. Plastic will just be there forever. And if it is a biodegradable plastic, it won't be there forever. So for me, it's a pretty, it's a pretty clean, it's clear. So we're just trying to, obviously we're trying to make it as clean as possible, but, uh, which we are like, I mean, we've got, uh, the clip cord covers. I mean, it's all supplies you need for tattooing, but it's like clip cord covers, bottle bags, razors, clean film, ink caps. It's stuff you wouldn't think about. It's stuff most uh, on consumer, non tattooer consumer is, isn't even going to know what happened. Like some of the stuff is, it's like, it's a little cup that puts ink in it. And then you have, you know, we, it's a clean film that you might wrap a table cover or a pillow in or it's just stuff like that. And uh, we've, we've got rinse cups. Uh, we've got a salve. I mean, basically, Everything that gets thrown away every single session, we've made in a biodegradable alternative. And prior to that, there were zero biodegradable alternatives. So we pretty much single-handedly eliminated the waste that could be produced. I mean, we just started, and like I said, it was not the ideal timing. Maybe, maybe it's kind of good because maybe it would have taken off too quickly and like we're trying to scale up infrastructure and get everything sorted and fulfillment. And, but I mean, it's, it's going just, it's like, it's crawling. I think it will make some difference if people buy it. That's the thing that's kind of challenged. You know, everyone talks about wanting to make the changes, but then people are like, oh, but it's, it's more expensive. And I'm like, yeah, because manufacturing is like uh, 10 times, 100 times more expensive for these products. Petroleum is extremely affordable, especially because the infrastructure has now been established for so long. Petrol products are very cheap. Like, I don't think people actually realize how cheap they are to make. That's why everything is, has petroleum in it. That's why you'll be like, wearing, like everything, like things we do not think normally typically realize are made out of oil, out of oil. You know, so it's, it's crazy. I, I think there's a lot, there's, I, I'm a very optimistic per person on average. So I think that, um, I think we can accomplish a lot. I, I, you know, I have high hopes for us as a species. Thank you for watching the Sarah Scoop show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.